Ah, touring. Every aspiring rocker's dream. The glamour. The mystique. The groupies. Of course, the fine dining. Me and the gang have embarked on a month-long tour of Florida. Figured why not document this for all the world to see. So I broke out my cell phone and went to work. You will know the trials and tribulations of the touring musician and meet the quirky gang that was selected to take part in this. Hold on to your seats, my friends. It's going to be a wild ride. We don't like that Gucci shit. We're low cap. Low cap. We don't like that Gucci shit. We're low cap. Low cap. Low cap. Well, let's let's talk for a minute about um, about music. Oh. Uh, uh, but getting away from the software issue, um, copyrighted music, um, YouTube, uh, places where you can actually go and you can listen to music, see videos um, for free without ever any kind of recompense going back to the artists that created that music um, and and that all seems perfectly fine and legal if you go to YouTube you can go to the official site of various artists and you can go to their website their YouTube site and watch the official video and always have the option to download that video yeah. Um, where does that fit in to what you're talking about with these? Um, well, see again, because they they're not really getting compensated. You know, my opinion. Every artist from you know, uh, coffee shop acts on up, the record companies, they're you know the record companies deserve this. I mean, there's like, you know, their record companies are really a bunch of hardworking folks that do their best to get only the best acts out to you guys so that you guys can listen to only the best music and they know what the best music is so no absolutely as far as i'm concerned that's like taking food out of those poor people's mouths no buy the album i see what would you say to <laughs> what would you say <clears throat> what would you say to a musician let's let's just say you've got a, a musician who's going to go uh, play for instance a, a country gig somewhere and and maybe he hasn't played very much country music and isn't familiar with the material and, and needs to learn uh, 40 songs very, very quickly. Now, knowing that if he goes out and he buys 40 CDs, it's going to cost him four times as much as he's going to get paid for this job he's going to play. And even if he went on iTunes and he bought all these songs for a dollar a piece, it's going to it's going to cut half of what he's going to make out of, uh, of his job. Um, this is a guy who could go to YouTube and could listen to every one of these songs for free. Well, yeah, but again, you know, these hard-working labels um, are then not going to get paid if you do that. So, really, what you need to do is um, just go buy the albums, really. You know, because, I mean, you know, this way you're giving back to the music community. You know what I mean? I think that's very important. Plus, it's legal. You know what I mean? It's like if you go and you play a YouTube video, then it is now broadcasting in your house. Now, heaven forbid, you had 10 people in your house. You know what I mean? Really, technically, then, at that point, ASCAP, BMI, CSAC, all these agencies really should get paid for that, you know? So, really, ultimately, instead of broadcasting it, because, again, at that point, you're only cutting the artist short and the record labels, just go buy the CDs. Now, I know that probably... The cost of these CDs, you know, maybe more or whatever than you know you making at the gig. But there's, you know, there's ways of dealing with that. I mean, you can, you can, for example, um, talk to your band leader. You know, say, look, um, obviously I'm not going to do any illegal downloading or broadcasting of this music, and yet, you know, I want to learn the song, um, and I really want to be able to help your act and be beneficial to your act. So, do you think that maybe? You might be able to just set aside like an allowance or something for these CDs, or maybe even buy them for me. And uh, then at that point, I can go ahead and learn them legally, you know, for your band, and go in there and I'll do a great job, you know, really, you know, because this way, 
give back to these artists that you are covering and you're getting paid to cover. So, you know, and your band leader will understand that. Really. Here's Dave, who's driving. Hey, how you doing? How do you how do you enjoy being in the first scene of the documentary on? The... Well, it's right where I belong. It um, is. Yeah. The leading role. I'm a leading man kind of person. So. Absolutely. The leading man. A lot of times starts out the scene. Leading leading men often look like hermits uh, from the Led Zeppelin Four album cover. Sometimes. That's well, kind of a look nowadays. Anyway. Yeah. It's the electric Jesus. And over here, we have Bill Whitaker. And Bill, what do you do with the band? I play drums, and I am the erstwhile uh, musical director, which is more, uh, more a, a, an empty title. I have the power to hire and fire. I'm working on the power of uh, actual life and death. I want the right to choose who lives and who dies. I found at a very early age that I was too physically frail for any kind of labor and uh, not intelligent enough for any white collar work, so I became a musician. <laughs> Originally, I was attracted to it for the money, and um, later, the posh luxury and the women were what kept me in it. Um, and the glamour that, you know, that is life on the road with a band. Um, what else can I say? But, but uh, now, Bill, you never told us what you do for a living. Wow, would you know it. Here I am trying to make a good first impression, first day on the gig, and I'm already mouthing off to the musical director. This is not going to be pretty. <laughs> Whew, that was easy. Okay, I think we could all get along here. This is a very good thing. Lord of Streets. Awesome! I like getting good news. So, uh, any breakthroughs? Uh, on our parking situation or oh, on uh, business situations? Business situations. Uh, I don't want to say too much. My friend has a, uh, a friend who's become a producer uh, and uh, lives up in Queens Ridge and has a. I think it's a okay, yeah, I'm gonna put you to work over there with this video. Hundred thousand dollars is turning out to be a It's turning out to be something amazing. Here it just has more amazing. There's a four thousand square foot condo there with a studio. Well, eventually he's gonna let us in on this little secret that he's got going on, and I cannot wait to hear what this is. Sounds like a very good opportunity, whatever it is. Listed, Dave. I I hope so. I need a I need a winter home down here. Ah, there we go. Public Beach. Keep you folks updated. We are on. Technically, like day three of the tour, I guess if you want to count day it as five. Florida. Day five. Day five. Day five. Day five to these guys. Uh, yeah. See, I came from Toronto oh. down there, and that's probably why I'm not feeling that. Uh, well, but let's call it let's day four point five. Day three point five. Let's call it day five. Okay. You, you came in that All same right. day, right? I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. I can't argue with the musical director you anyway. Came in on Friday. <laughs> it looks like this is some sort of trail that will take us there. There are the e-cigarettes. These are the analog cigarettes. It's analog. This is digital. Digital cigarettes. Mine stinks. It smells really nice. Mine smells like bananas and, and boobies. Boobies that are covered in chocolate, mint, and uh, bananas. We take it Bill's had boobies foster a few times in his life. <laughs>
I don't know. So we were just warned that there were lots of men at war. Uh, it doesn't sound good though. No. Okay, we just got back from the beach. <laughs> Here's Dave. Here's Bill. There's a the mangrove. Pretty cool. So now the plan is we're going to hit a restaurant and then go grocery shopping so that we don't shop hungry. This is our tour bus. We'll be spending a lot of time in this. <laughs> 